Beautiful. Good morning, everyone. We are live. Welcome to another another day in the Master Spotlight. I know we have another week uh, this week, so definitely want to go ahead and get the ball rolling. My name is Brennan Kelly. I'm one of the moderators over at the GMAT Club, and I'm joined with uh, Sharon and Ananya from the WHU Auto School of Management uh, today. We're going to run through a presentation uh, we're going to come back, do some Q&A, so definitely make sure you're posting your questions in the chat so we can get all of your questions answered. Uh, but without further ado, I will go ahead and hand the mic over to Sharon. Hi, everyone. Uh, good evening, because it's almost evening here in Germany. Uh, I am Sharon. I represent the Master of Science programs uh, here at WHU, as we say in German. Um, and uh, I will be presenting the four Master of Science programs that we have on offer. Uh, with me is Ananya, uh, a current Master in Management student. Ananya, if you want to quickly introduce yourself. Hi, good evening, guys. Uh, I'm Ananya. I'm from India, and I am currently a second year Master in Management student at Vehau Automation School of Management, and I'm looking forward to today's event. Okay. Uh, so to kick off, uh, I will talk a little bit about where VHU is. So um, VHU is uh, founded in 1984, first in Koblenz, which is actually where I live. Um, and then the campus was moved to Falendar, which is a small town um, in the Rhineland Palatinate region. Um, we have two campuses, one in Falendar and the other one in Dusseldorf. So campus Dusseldorf is actually home to our full-time and part-time MBA programs and our executive education programs. And uh, Campus Falendar is home to our Bachelor of Science uh, programs and all of our Master of Science programs and our doctoral programs. Um, Falendar itself is a pretty small town with a population about 8,000 people. Maybe later on in the Q&A, Ananya can tell you a little bit more about what it's like to live there and what student life is like. Um, so you're more than welcome to uh, ask us questions about that as well, um, but just quick, you know, overview is that um, the location is in the upper middle Rhine Valley, which is a UNESCO heritage site. So there's a lot of historic castles and towns nearby and vineyards. Um, Falendar and the surrounding area is pretty famous for the wine. So although Germany is famous for beer, uh, the, the region that we are in right now is uh, famous for our German wines, which is also really nice. Um, the area is actually very famous for also beautiful hiking paths. So the, this is a great area for people who love nature um, and scenery and things like that. Uh, so we're actually in a really beautiful part of uh, Germany as well. And uh, it is also close to a lot of major cities like Dusseldorf, Cologne, Bonn. So if you're also interested in city life, um, it's very reachable by train uh, and it's a pretty short trip as well. So um, going forward, um, we will start with the Master in Management program. So um, at this point, I will also invite uh, Ananya to present it because it's her program and she's currently studying in it. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Um, hi, guys. Uh, as you all know that I am a second year Master in Management student at Vihau. And I just want to give you a brief introduction of what the course looks like. As you can see here, it's a two-year program. It's a 120 credit track program. Unfortunately, there's no like a smaller version of this program available. So you, the two years are very clearly demarcated. The first year is the study year. So you have two semesters. Each semester is further divided into two quarters each. Uh, each quarter is of two months and uh, you can like choose your own subjects, mix and match from different kinds of concentrations. So you have six core modules. You have financial accounting. Look at this one. Uh, you, these are the concentrations that you can take. So you have financial accounting, you have business analytics, data analytics, economics, innovation, marketing, sales, strategy, leadership, and supply chain management. Uh, in addition to all of this, you can also choose other subjects from the other MS electives and also the entrepreneurship courses. Uh, this is the study part of it and then you have your compulsory internship which is supposed to last around like three months then you have a small study gap and um, then starts your second year which is 
like out of university year in the sense that you first have your semester abroad. So we have a wide variety of locations and universities to choose from. And you can choose your university and then you can go and spend around five to six months in that other university and gain a different kind of exposure, see a different kind of life and different people. And right after you come back, you will be writing the master thesis, which is again an experience of its own. Cool. Thank you, Ananya. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you want to talk about a little bit about the um, job entry? Sure. Uh, well, uh, since master in management is uh, a more holistic kind of uh, course, you are taught a lot of different kinds of subjects and you essentially learn a lot of different things. So you can see that people go into a lot of different um, industries as a whole. Um, when I first started at Vihau, I remember uh, in the first class, some one professor came into the class and asked, how many of you want to go into consulting? And legit, I could see that there were like around 50% of the people who said yes to that. So this is a very, very true picture of what it looks like. So yeah, a lot of the students, they go into consulting and then you have different industry. Uh, you have a little bit of financial background, like a, a, bit, a few of the students also go into some sort of financial roles. And then, of course, you have startups, you have people who want to go into PhD and continue studying. And then there are other people who find their own companies. Uh, founding companies is um, very much a part of the Vihau spirit, which I think Sharon will totally like talk about when she reaches the MIE part of it. But I just wanted to like introduce that. <laughs> Thank you, Ananya. <laughs> So um, the next uh, program that I wanted to present is our new Master in International Business program. So um, this is a brand new program that we are offering starting from our fall 2020, 2021 intake. Um, so this is the, so currently we're, we're basically also recruiting for it. Um, we're actually very, very excited about this new addition to our Master of Science uh, program portfolio because this program, unlike all the other programs that we have, um, is ideal for anyone with a business minor. So you can, you can have a different major. You can have a major in psychology. You can have a major in hospitality. You can have a major in sports management. You can have a, a different major in anything. Um, but as long as you have a business minor, you would be eligible to um, enroll in this program. And this is also a general management program. But unlike the master in management, um, this is a more set program and a more structured program. So as you can see here, um, there are nine core courses that make up this program. Um, and it is also a 120 credit or two year credit track, a uh, two year track like the master in management program, but it is more structured and it has, it contains really interesting courses like international strategy, trade and investment, negotiations, psychology of leadership. So. It is, it is a very well-rounded um, general management program that uh, addresses the breadth of um, the field of general management. So like the master in management, it, there's also a mandatory internship involved. Um, you can take up to three electives. And then there's also a mandatory semester abroad and a mandor mandatory thesis. So um, there is still a little bit of um, tailor ta tailoring that you can do by choosing three different electives. But of course, it is a lot more structured. So we're very excited about this. Um, OK, so master in entrepreneurship. So this is this is Germany is Germany's first master of science program in the field of entrepreneurship and innovation, which uh, combines our high standards of academics with VHU's entrepreneurial network, like uh, Ananya just mentioned. So this is a program which focuses completely on entrepreneurship and innovation, which offers also different career paths. Um, unlike the Master in Management and the Master in International Business, there are two different tracks here. So there's the shorter track, 90 ECTS, which is 17 months, as you can see here or the 120 uh, credit track, which will be uh, 21 months long. In any case, um, the five core modules and the seven electives are the same. So um, this, this program has also quite a high uh, level of customization that you can do. Um, so the five core modules are basically the five core courses that you have to take as part of the entrepreneurship program, which includes Sprint to Berlin, which is a really fun um, outing to Berlin where you get to 
uh, toward different startups and different companies. Um, there's also corporate entrepreneurship, advanced entrepreneurial marketing and finance, accounting and financial analysis, and industrial organization for entrepreneurs. And there's a uh, room for seven electives, which you can take from this list of electives that you can see here. Or you can also take up to three electives from a different program. So if you're also interested in management, if you're also interested in finance, you can also take courses from um, the pool of MSc electives from those study programs as well. Um, for the short term, uh, so the long term uh, 21 month program is basically similar. The structure is very similar. You still do the internship, you do a semester abroad and the master thesis. Um, however, um, in the 90 credit uh, short, shorter track, um, you have, instead of a semester abroad, you have an international capstone module, which is one week of company visits um, abroad. Uh, so last year, um, the capstone module was in Denver, Colorado for the Master in Entrepreneurship program, where a group of students went to tour different uh, companies such as Google um, and also attended tailor-made lectures. Um, and they also had different activities, like I think they also went whitewater rafting, which sounded super fun to me as well. Um, so there's also a lot of different activities that are involved. Um, of course, they also do an internship, but, but it is a little bit shorter um, than the uh, ones that are doing the longer um, program, and they'll also have to do a master thesis. So in case you're wondering what kind of uh, opportunities you can have uh, in, in, with a master in entrepreneurship uh, degree, uh, there, are, there are different paths. Um, there are many, many different opportunities. So for the, the corporate transformers are for uh, students who are interested in, a to, in potentially working in a corporate setting, but um, bring innovation and a dynamic perspective. Um, so we also hear this from a lot of alumni uh, who are themselves working in uh, very uh, established companies and corporations like Henke, um, where, you know, the entrepreneurial background brings a, a sort of a dynamic force into the workplace. So nowadays when they're hiring new employees, they're also looking to pe have people who have this kind of background, who's, you know, creative and, and able to think on their feet and so on. Um, but of course, uh, the Master in Entrepreneurship is also a great program for if you're interested in having your own business. Um, so if you're interested in becoming a founder or an entrepreneur um, and you have your own business idea and want to develop your own business ideas, this is also a great place. Um, also because we have a very entrepreneurial network um, and there's a, there's a lot of different um, skill sets and, and um, toolkits that are uh, provided by the program to help you understand how to run a startup, how to build a strong network and how to connect with investors. But of course, if you're the type of person who's interested in entrepreneurship, but is also interested on the financial side of things, then um, you could become a venture capitalist. Uh, and so this is, this is also great for those who are interested in, you know, scaling startups and, and creating value in businesses um, and just basically having a career in industries that are key determinants of, you know, making sure that startups are successful. Or if you're also a technologically savvy person, um, you could be the technology expert who is basically uh, the liaison between the tech offices and the research, research and development offices and management. So then you, you can uh, take extra electives in coding related um, courses or AI related courses and uh, sort of get knowledge in, in terms of those areas that are really important for top management positions lately. So um, the job in entry by industry very much differs from the master and management group. So of course, a, a lot of them become founders. As you can see here, 31% of our um, master and entrepreneurship graduates become founders. Um, but th there are also a lot of people who go into startups and online businesses. Um, there are also a, a handful of uh, people who went into consulting um, and also a, another big group who went into industry and services um, and also banking and finance. So you can see here that um, there's a lot of different uh, opportunities and industries uh, that would uh, really value the experience, uh, the, a student or an alumna of the um, Master in Entrepreneurship program. 
So moving on, uh, last but not least, uh, this is our Master in Finance program. So like the Master in Entrepreneurship, we also offer two different tracks. Um, so as you can see here, there's a 90 e a shorter track for 90 ECTS and 120 ECTS longer track. Um, but at the core of it all, um, the, the academic requirements are basically the same uh, for both tracks. And uh, the master in finance is actually the most uh, flexible out of all our study programs because there's only three core, core modules that are required, uh, which is capital market theory, international financial reporting and advanced econometrics. And uh, students have the option to pick up to nine electives. And uh, here's a list of uh, master in finance electives uh, below the chart. Um, there was actually no more space for me to write more. There's a lot more um, electives that are actually offered. Um, but th this is just a quick snapshot of uh, what, you know, the kind of courses that you can expect. Um, it is a very quantitative heavy program. Um, and uh, basically the, the finance program pr provides the fundamentals of financial markets and prepares students for careers across all financial landscapes. Um, and ba basically, yeah, the internship uh, requirements are the same. Uh, for the for the people who are in the shorter track, then uh, they can do a one week international capstone module. So the destination would of course be different from the master in finance, uh, master in entrepreneurship uh, destination. I think last year they went to uh, New York City, or or before they went to New York City, and then they at one point they also went to London. So it's also a similar format where uh, you would then be attending different company presentations and different tailor made lectures. So um, the job entry by industry, again, is a very different uh, snapshot from all the other study programs. Of course, a lot of them go into banking and finance. So if you're if you're interested in the master in finance program, bear in mind a lot of the people who are interested in the program specifically are also very interested in on the financial side of things. So most of them do go into banking and finance, but uh, of course, a few of them actually also go into industry and services a few, and consulting and startup and online businesses. Some of them actually also continue their education and do their doctoral programs as well, which is always a, an option. And uh, a very small group of them actually also do become founders. So just because you're in the master in finance uh, program does not mean that you cannot be a founder. So anyone can be a founder at VHU. Uh, so in terms of network, uh, I also wanted to draw your attention quickly to the double double degree partner universities. So um, our master of science programs have, uh, in addition to the 200 uh, universities around the world that are partner universities for a semester abroad. We also have these specific universities and, and business schools as our double degree partner universities, uh, which is which is also an interesting um, uh, interesting option for those who are interesting interested in doing a one year abroad instead of only one semester abroad. Um, but we also have a lot and double degree options like that. So if you are interested in that, feel free to ask me more questions about it and I can address them during the Q&A. Um, so coming to the career side of things, um, I would like to also um, invite Ananya again uh, to talk a little bit about the Career Center and what they do. And uh, of course, in particular, also about these uh, three uh, career events. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, before I start, I just want to say two things. Firstly, uh, when I first came to Vihau, um, some senior of mine, they told me that uh, there are three women in the career center and those three are goddesses. Always worship them and always be on their side. So <laughs> yes, because these, these women, they're amazing. And also, um, most of the times, like most of the times while I was in Falandar, uh, we did not have to cook our own dinners because we had so many career events. We were always eating in the university. That's not why we went to the university, but yes, like I'm just trying to tell you how frequent it is and how good the exposure is. Uh, should I continue? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so these are the three main uh, career events that we have. Uh, there are more, but uh, these are the three main big events where a lot of different companies come. You have your career day, you have your founder's career day, and you have master your career. Uh, these three are a little bit different from each other in the sense that like founder's career day uh, is like 
it's filled with those companies whose alumni is actually from vihau and they have like founded their own companies and now they're looking to expand and get more people to join them so they come back to their alma mater uh then you have master your career and your career day both of these uh, events they have industries coming like proper companies you have different companies like bsf dykman and adidas and all of these different companies you can network with all the representatives from all these different places uh, you can build your own contacts and then sometimes you also have recruiting events one on one chats and yes of course good food yeah yeah these are just some companies that have presented uh, or or attended our company events <laughs> the the really good thing about these events is like the um how easily uh, you can con like talk to all of these people because they are there for you you can just go stand there and you don't even have to talk to them about jobs and stuff you can talk to them about how they built their career where did they start why are they where they are you can ask them like very specific insights about what is the company culture like inside of a company because it's very difficult to understand that from like an outsider's perspective so like we were told that always go to every career uh, center event and we did and it did pay off in the end it did pay off i did find my internship through the career center and i have never looked back so uh ananya do you also want to talk a little bit about entrepreneurial um environment if you have more sure, sure. as i said in the beginning so like at vihau anybody can be an entrepreneur and i am not from the mie track i am from the mim track but since day one whenever you're taught something you you can just feel it you can feel the spirit inside those buildings amongst all of those people the kind of discussions we have during class the kind of assignments we have during class like the first class i had at vihau was a b2b class and we had to like we had a class for 45 minutes and then we were sent to an another room we were paired up and we were asked to negotiate on a certain like topic and like the entire situation was also given that like this is the material you are negotiating on who's the buyer who's the seller so as you can see it's very practical and like it it's out there in the real life it's just being simulated inside so because you are always exposed to all of these different kinds of knowledge and also all these alumni they keep coming back to the university they keep telling us about their own experiences so like being surrounded you are a product of your surroundings so like being surrounded by all of these kinds of people it just it just like inculcates that spirit so deeply in you that like i'm in my second year and i can already think that yes i do want to start something of my own like sometimes so you'll be in the startup founder section of the chart there yeah, so, so yes <laughs> yeah so um this is also a a, a very a, a very small snapshot of basically the entrepreneurial network at vihau so um for those who are in very um in tune with europe like zalando is a one of our four unicorn um businesses uh that came out of vihau and if you live in germany then you'll definitely know backwerk because this is something that this is the bakery that you see at every single um train station um and hello fresh is uh basically a, a a meal prep um delivery service so which is also operating on multiple in multiple countries so there are a lot of different um uh, startups that came out of vihau <laughs> I think a lot of people would also know Spring Tech Partners. Ah, Spring Tech Partners. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Student clubs. <laughs> so VHU also has a very wide range of extracurricular activities. So of course, it's not just you know classes that you're taking. Uh, maybe Ananya can talk a little bit about um, some clubs that she might have been involved in. Um, but basically, it's not just studying. There are a lot of uh, different student clubs that. um that exist on campus uh and uh, our students also basically uh organize these big conferences like campus for finance uh sensibility idea lab um and of course your masters sports which we're famous for in Europe um so there are also you know all these other activities that you can be doing um aside from studying or attending networking events <laughs> so 
there are a lot of different things going on even in, in Falendar as well. So coming to the really important part, and I think I'm running out of time, so I'm going to talk really quickly over this. But basically, admission requirements, um, you need a first academic degree from an accredited institution. So that means that, you know, if, as long as your university is recognized and you have a bachelor's degree, um, that will work. Um, and uh, I mean, depending on which program you're interested in, there might be, you know, different uh, requirements for what kind of major you should have had um, in your undergraduate degree, which I'm happy to go into detail in the Q&A. Um, but basically, you, you first need a bachelor's degree. And uh, for the master in management, master in international business and master in finance, we need a GMAT or GRE or a TM base, which is the German version of GMAT and GRE. Um, our minimum GMAT requirement is 600 and our minimum GRE requirement is 155 for a verbal and 155 for quantitative. Um, for the master in entrepreneurship candidates, uh, instead of a GMAT or a GRE, we need a pitch deck, which is basically a 10 PowerPoint slide deck um, explaining a business idea that you have or a business idea that um, you might want to develop in the future, a business idea that you are already working on. It could be, it could be anything. And of course, we also need proof of English proficiency. All the Master of Science programs are taught 100% in English. As such, we need proof of pro English proficiency. So that would be your TOEFL, your IELTS, your Cambridge um, tests. Um, our TOEFL minimum is 100 and our um, IELTS minimum is 7.0. Um, although we do recommend a slightly higher um, score of at least 105 for, um, IELTS, uh, for TOEFL and 7.5 for IELTS because of the requirements by our partner institutions um, for um, se se the semester abroad. And of course, we also need a at least 12 weeks of relevant practical experience. So this could be internships done during your during or after um, undergraduate studies, or um, you, you can also have actual work experience um, for the master in management and master in international business. We accept candidates with up to two years of postgraduate work experience. And for master in finance and master in entrepreneurship, we accept candidates with up to four years of postgraduate work experience. And uh, for Germans, German or German speaking candidates, uh, we do require international experience. Of course, we don't require this for um, non, you know, non German speaking students. Um, and uh, at least this intake, this is even this is also not a hard requirement because of the pandemic situation. And uh, of course, we also need a CV, uh, so your CV in English. So the application process is relatively simple. You start your application online on our application center, um, and then you'll have to complete a QR interview, which is a video interview, uh, which consists of about eight different questions that you will ha then have to answer and record yourself, um, you know, via this platform. And then um, if you if you make it through that round, then you will be invited for a one on one interview uh, with one of one of our um, colleagues. So it could be a colleague of mine, it could be a, a, a professor, it could be an academic director, it could be someone from the Career Center who's then interviewing you in person. Um, and then if you if you're successful, then you will be made a study offer. So the entire life cycle of this process is about six to eight weeks in total. Um, in terms of deadlines, the last deadline for the fall 2021 intake for candidates who require a visa would be the end of April. Um, and for non visa requiring candidates, then it would be the end of May. Um, we still have we still have a bunch of interview days coming up, so feel free to apply. Um, if you apply by February twenty the, five, by February twenty eighth, you will receive a one hundred euro application fee waiver. So um, we will only start um, collecting application fees um, from the first of March onwards. Um, Normally, we also have a uh, an early bird deadline, but of course, unfortunately, that has already passed. But we also offer um, discounts for people who apply early in case you're interested for the next intake and not this one. <laughs> and the interviews are done, as I said, one-on-one uh, -on -one basis. So um, right now, this is also taking place online, but normally we also offer it on campus. 
Financing options. Um, so the 120 credit track, the 21 month track, uh, would cost uh, 32,000 euros, 400 in total, um, which also includes the semester abroad. And for the 90 credit track, which is shorter, it is uh, 24,300 euros, um, but that does not include the uh, 1,600 euro fee for the capstone module abroad. Um, there are several different uh, options for scholarships uh, for the master in international business program. Uh, for example, specifically, we uh, offer the international business leader scholarship. Um, and for uh, for some of the other programs, we also have different scholarships, such as family business scholarship, female founder scholarship, future founder scholarship. Um, in proxy is the alumni association. They also offer um, different scholarships for international students and women in business. Um, there are also different merit based scholarships for students with excellent uh, GMAT, GRE scores. Um, or really excellent academic performance. There are also different financing options that are available also for international students. So um, if you wanna check with us, what kind of options would be uh, available to you, you can always get in touch with us. So that's it. <laughs> um, thank you for uh, attending our presentation and now we can move to the Q&A portion. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much for the presentation. That was a lot of good information. Um, and it looks like we do have a good couple questions in the chat, as well as some uh, questions that we definitely want to have saved on the video. So people coming back and watching this uh, can see those can see those later. Um, I think one of the first uh, good questions I like here is talking about German proficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, this one talks about MBA, but I think we can broaden it to uh, kind of the MIM and other programs as well. So can you talk a little bit about uh, the need for proficiency in German while, uh, I guess, pursuing your career, uh, both internships and jobs, and I guess what level is necessary? Ananya, do you want to take that one? <laughs> I would like to take that one. Uh, well, um, actually, I do have like a A2 level of German proficiency. Um, when I say that, I mean that I can understand if you speak to me, but if you if I start speaking, they automatically start speaking to me in English. So it's that bad right now. But <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I still managed to uh, do two full time internships and um, like Yes, since I am uh, pursuing a mass like um, um, specialization in marketing, so sometimes yes, it's it's a little bit difficult if you don't know the language, but it's not impossible. What I always say is that um, you will eventually have to learn the language, not just because like you need to know it to work, otherwise you would not survive, but because when you learn the language, you also get like you get more knowledge about the kind of culture because you can talk to people. The communication within the company might not always be in English because people are more comfortable speaking to each other in their own language and you just understand the entire like culture and everything much, much better. So, yes, you wouldn't die without it, but it's better if you learn it. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can definitely um, attest to that as someone who's been living here for seven years as a um, as an international um, person. Like I, I used to study here. I came here to study, and then I ended up working here. It is it is definitely useful to to know more um, German, also because it opens up a lot of different career opportunities for you as well. Um, I found that a lot of German companies are eager to. Um, higher international talent, but the language barrier seems to be an issue on both sides. So um, I always uh, recommend uh, candidates, if they are able to, to start learning German. And um, I mean, VHU also offers German language courses um, that run parallel to, to all the other courses that are um, offered as part of the Master of Science programs. So there's also that option as well. Hmm. Fantastic feedback. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And I mean, from what I've, I've noticed to just myself having that like immersion learning of language is so much easier as well than just kind of opening up some app and trying to learn because I Lord knows I can't do that. <laughs> but one of the one, a lot of the questions we get as well are about addressing weaknesses in your application. Um, and I think there are a couple different weaknesses. So I'm just going to kind of throw up a general, uh, but there are so how would you address maybe both having a lack of extracurriculars, or then maybe you also have a, a lower GPA on uh, the undergraduate side. 
how should you go about kind of bolstering up your uh, application if you have a couple of those weaknesses or, or areas you think are weak weaknesses? Maybe I can take that one because it's a very application specific question. Um, so the, the really interesting thing about our online application is that we don't require any recommendation letters or motivational letters or, or statement of purpose or anything like that. Um, which actually shocks a lot of candidates. But the reason we do that is because we um, we leave all that up to the Kira interview round, where um, we will ask the eight different questions, and then the 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 candidate will then have to record themselves answering um, the questions. And the questions that we ask have different different um, different sort of um, themes, but um, mainly it's about the motivation, like the, your motivation to study at VHU. And yes, sometimes it also includes uh, questions that are related to weaknesses, like your own reflection on what a weakness is in terms of um, you know the teamwork and how how you go about approaching tasks and things like that. So it's very it's very personal in that way. Um, so I I mean. Off the top of my head, I can't really think of a specific blank or question on the application form that you could be writing in. Um, but I can also assure you that, um, you know, we do a holistic admissions process. So it's not like if we don't see extracurriculars on your CV that we won't even invite you for a Kira interview. Um, if you are uh, eligible to study in the programs, um, that you apply for, uh, you have the right degree, you have, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, we will still invite you um, for the QR interview. And this is the opportunity that you have to really make sure that you, you, um, can stand out um, and you can you can then talk about like your motivation to study and, and all, all of these things. Um, I mean, you know, we have a mix. We, we do have quite a few people who have extracurriculars and all of these things. Um, we also have quite a few people who don't have extracurriculars and all of these things. I mean, we understand that that usually depends on the school that you attended and whether or not there were ap actual opportunities um, available. So, you know, we will not punish people for not having extracurriculars. Of course, it is always a plus. <laughs> if that helps. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's great. So, no, and you, and you gave a you gave a great response to that. And I think um, it's great for everyone to understand the holistic part of the um, exactly. review process. And yeah. because you have maybe a shortcoming in one part, you can always uh, make up for another. So thank you. Great, great answer. Um, kind of moving on to the, let's call it the current state of things. I know we've had to move virtual in a lot of ways. Uh, classes have been starting online. There's there's just a lot of uncertainty in, uh, I guess, what this next school year or application cycle really looks like just because of how everything's been going. Um, so do you think you could comment um, on, I, I guess, both the applicant application cycle this year and then the start of classes this year due to the current events? Um, and, and I'll just say uh, with the issues, we're gonna, we're gonna stay away from that, that fun little word, um, but because of the issues that are, that are arising from the, um, from the, 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 the current climate and current uh, sicknesses, if you will, how are we, uh, how is uh, WHU kind of combating that? So um, on the application side, I can comment. Um, so we are seeing an uptick in application volumes, uh, which we're of course, grateful for. Um, but also, uh, this is why I keep recommending to every single candidate that I speak to, to, to get your application in early. We do rolling admissions. So the earlier you apply, the better chance that you, you'll, you'll make it through and you, you get a spot. Um, because we're literally filling up the, the seats as we go along. Um, so if you wait too long, uh, you might not be able to even apply even before the deadline, because what happened last uh, cycle was that we already filled up all our study spots, um, I think even by the end of April. So we, we had to turn away a lot of very good candidates in, in early May because we're literally like, oh, I'm sorry, we just have no more spots to offer you. And the thing is, um, all the programs have a cap, so to speak. Um, we're, lo we're looking for a specific number of people for each program. So the MIM program is, of course, the biggest um, cohort that we have because it's also our flash flagship program, so to speak. So we, the MIM program has about 100 students. Last year, we had 121 MIM students. Um, this year, we're aiming to have around 100 again. 
Um, the master in finance, for example, has about uh, 50 people. We're aiming to have about 50 people. Um, last year, we had 47. Um, for the master in entrepreneurship, we're aiming to have about 40 to 50 people. So, uh, you know, last year it was 42 people. And for the new master master in international business, we're aiming to have about 30 to 40 students. So, so you know, these are not a lot of seats. Um, so we're, we're always saying apply early. Um, in terms of like the start start dates and stuff, we did start on time. So we, we always scheduled for our new academic year to start on September 1st, which is what we were able to do. Um, in terms of the actual adaptations of the courses and so on, um, Ananya, feel free to jump in if you want. Um, but then you're also a second year student, so you're, you've taken all those courses already last year. Um, but this uh, this academic year, um, we started actually, we started with hybrid learning. So some of our students were still able to sit in the in, in the classes um, while some of the people joined online virtually. Um, but then of course the situation got a little bit um, more complicated in the beginning <laughs> in the beginning of this uh, year. So now we're doing 100% online, but as soon as we're able, we're ready to switch back um, into having more people interaction again. So we're basically hoping for that right now. <laughs> No, once again, I'm, I'm great. Oh, go ahead, Ananya. I just want to add one thing. Yes, like uh, when when this thing actually started happening, I don't want to use the word, but yes, when this actually hit and we, we were actually in our last quarter and we just had like two more months of classes left. All I can say is the switch was really fast. It was, uh, it seemed very effortless. We know that it was not effortless, of course, because just moving from an offline mode of education to online, it's quite different. But what I'm trying to say here is that the university is very well equipped to handle a lot of different kinds of things. So whatever it is, don't worry, WHU has got you. <laughs> Perfect, no, great addition. Um, and it, it does look like we're coming up on time. Uh, so I do want to uh, give you the, the chance to, maybe the last question is, what is the best way to get in contact with WHU if you have maybe application questions or just kind of further questions? Um, and then I'm actually just going to further give it to you kind of for final thoughts uh, before closing out after that. Master at vehau.edu. That is my our email address. Uh, you're more than welcome to, I don't know where to type it in. So, uh, <laughs> but you're more than welcome to um, get in touch with us, uh, get in touch with the master um, team. We also have a chat platform for um, you know, for, for our ambassadors. So Ananya is actually one of our uh, early ambassadors for the platform. We have a platform called Unibuddy where you can basically text um, a current student or an alumna or alumnus or whoever uh, at VHU to ask them more questions about the programs, the classes, et cetera, et cetera. So that platform is also available. Um, I also don't know how to send you this link, but um, you know you, you can find it on our Master of Science programs page. Uh, we also have a, a bunch of different virtual coffee chats and event, virtual events that come up. So you're always more than welcome to sign up for those um, and, and join us uh, for coffee chats or, or info session or anything of the sort. Beautiful, great. Well. Thank you, everyone. We're, we're coming up on time. So we are going to go ahead and set off. There is a link down bottom um, to if you want to find out more information, uh, please go there. But I do want to thank both Ananya and Sharon for the great presentation, the great answers. Um, and, we're, and we're looking forward to the rest of the week. But thank you, everyone. Thank you.